back to the Target Transfers podcast, the number one heat printing podcast in the world. Today, we are joined by Chessie from Squeegee and Ink, a very well-known print shop who specialise in screen printing and education. Um, so we're just going to talk a little bit more about how you got started, a bit more about your business um, and everything that you guys do. So do you want to give the listeners a little introduction? I'm sure everyone's really keen to hear who you are and what you do. Yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, it's a screen printing studio, but we started as an open access workshop where we would teach. And then we kind of got pulled in quite quickly into commercial printing, printing for other people. And then like we've been doing T-shirts for the last few years and it's it's been like the main bulk of our work. And then um, I've always been doing things on the side, like supplying screens with images exposed on and film and educational resources on the side so we're quite broad but our speciality is screen print still yeah and how did you get started in garment decorating what was sort of the specific thing that led you into this industry because it's quite a specific thing to get into yeah for sure um so it came from seeing my partner at university screen printing like uh just wrapping paper and then she'd go and like sell it on the market at the weekend and I thought that was the coolest thing ever being able to get a piece of paper add value to it so that it became valuable and then go and like directly sell it and see the whole process end to end um and just being on the market as well selling I love all of that type of thing so um yeah so he incorporated like craft and the excitement of making your own money so that's how I got into screen print generally. And then we kind of stayed in the fine art kind of side of um, uh, like the graphic side of screen print for a long time. But then we just got asked to do a few shirts. And then when it gets into garment decorating, it's the most exciting thing. So it really does suck you under. And we just just stopped getting so many art, fine art jobs. So um, yeah, wearing your own shirt is even more exciting than seeing a a print on a wall for me so I think yeah. it's just dragged us in through through just being something that's really incredibly enjoyable to do day to day so that's that's where I got into it just getting asked to do it getting commissioned to do it and then um having fun with it and making that the main basis of our work I think I'm curious do you remember the designs that your partner originally was putting onto the wrapping paper Have you, does that sort of stick out in your memories We've still got one. Um, we've given so much artwork to family members. They've even got it up in their houses still. So like, oh, that's I, I think it's in my brother's toilet, which doesn't sound very romantic, <laughs> but, but it's like a, it's like a big framed. So she did a couple, she did some like scenes of London, like as a slice through. So you could see like the London eye all the way down to the tube. And then you could see what was under the river and stuff like that. So Oh, I know exactly what it is, yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. I've got my first screen print around the corner. It's a pigeon. It's like a colour blend <laughs> pigeon. It's awful, but it's still your first one, so I had to keep it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, we've got some really um, – I'll probably be a fired if I ever put them on Instagram, I think, but we've got – we have to keep all of our um, – because we do a lot of stock transfers, so we have to keep all of the examples. So we have a, like, historic record, say, someone ever re redid them, even if they're 40 years old, we're like, look, we've got the magazines to prove them. But um, there's some very interesting artwork that used to go in 80s brochures. Yeah. Um, <laughs> as you can imagine, um, they probably it wouldn't get away with today, I'm sure. Yeah. I, I even saw a recent post from you guys, and it was, like, your old presses. And I, oh, yeah. yeah, and you were like wow, this, like, how much, like, having, like, the digital display makes them look so much more futuristic now and how basic that kind of technology was even. So, yeah, yeah I'm glad. I, I, that was our first press. When Rachel showed me the image, I sort of had to second, I had to do double takes. I thought, no, that's not something that we'd have ever produced, but it was before <laughs> the electronics, so that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Even, no. even some of the older electronics machines, we literally, we could still turn them on and work. I mean... When we used to do testing and stuff for people when they send in sending like materials out, can you can you put transfer and it's like, yeah, yeah, we'll give it a go. But like they're literally 20 years old because we got we can't, we can't justify throwing these things away that yeah, work, perfectly. work perfectly fine. But they're very yeah. Yeah, they're very futuristic what some of them in the eighties and nineties thought like 2030 <laughs> would look. 
<laughs> yeah they thought you'd just snap your fingers now and you'd just get dressed again in some kind of like robot outfit but it's not yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i want to develop that much but yeah no it's, it's a really exciting area to be in garment decoration and we've seen it even in the last few weeks where there's stuff that we can't do and there isn't mm -hmm. the technology even around yet to do it yeah so we've got this particular clientele which is um nft owners so they want digital, they want to be able to like scan their shirt or digitally display their artwork that they've collected mm -hmm. online on their yeah. outfit. So there's like that area is being explored even now, but in a few years it'd be like, oh yeah, you're going to add an NFT to that or something. You're going to add a chip or like it's, it's a little bit further along than QR codes, but it'll yeah, become normal though that's the crazy thing at the moment everyone's sort of just getting used to it and dipping their toe in but like you say in a few years or even maybe sooner it will become something that's just expected as standard for um print shops like yourselves yeah exactly even like um when i was at uni i was exploring like augmented reality and qr codes and that seemed like the future and then everyone just ignored it for 10 years and now it's the norm again because of something mm. like covid like putting it into the into the public yeah, yeah 100%. there's always something to learn isn't there guys but yeah exactly yeah. and then on the other hand there's always something to teach people so it's uh all goes hand in hand i think and that's something you guys do a lot of isn't it you educate a lot on screen printing uh, do you have sort of people come in to you and do that or do you do it online i know your youtube channel is quite big you do a lot of video work and things like that uh yeah the youtube we're growing now um so we, we have honed, I used to do a lot of workshops, but then what I found was the people who were taking the workshops were just doing it like as a fun experience day. And it's like, I'm not really, uh, like I can do it, but I didn't, it's not very fulfilling, just entertaining like a group who are doing like a Hindu and they don't actually yeah. care about screen print. They just want to like make some funny bags with gin written on them, which wasn't my thing. Yeah. It was a <laughs> lot of hard work and like you're washing your hands 30 times and you're just like knackered. But what I've kind of like molded it into, and it has been through price as well and like structuring the day a bit is my workshops are for people who are trying to start new businesses. And like, so they're very focused on what they want to do in the day they've got like serious questions and, and I can help them follow on with other things. So I can like guide them on what equipment to pick and that type of thing. So I find that much more rewarding. Um, and I've upped the price of it so that I've actually get value for my day instead of just being exhausted at the end of the day and then it's just done and then they walk out and it's complete. So um, yeah, no, the digital digital courses are something that I'm pushing and we're, we're linking up with um, some other big websites to sell them like as a product on their website as well. So mm -hmm. it's definitely something that's, that can build in the background where you can focus like a whole week's work making a course and then hopefully it'll keep generating, um, you know, revenue for you for, for years to come. So we found a lot of value working on those types of projects. I would agree with that. It's the same for these sort of master classes we do here is, it's really rewarding when someone comes back to you six months or a year later and we're like, remember me? Like we see often see a promotion, like, remember me? You're like, oh yeah. And they're like, yeah, I've, I've been, I've been killing it now. My heat press is paid off. And, or like in your case, like, yeah, I've been, I've gone through X amount of screens this week. Um, I can't yeah. keep up with it because so many people want to buy my t-shirts. It's, it's really rewarding. Like seeing that look on their face when they're like, yeah, actually they they they've got that real buzz from being in, being a garment decorator. Yeah, because the, the, I don't know a screen printer who doesn't use a heat press, mm -hmm. you know, that every all the screen printers have a heat press and they use both of those kind of like technologies together. So like me, to, me for example, we, we're doing uh, quite a big job this week where the guy's got like eight different designs, but we've just ordered our ultra colors. Mm -hmm. So we're doing all the inside neck labels, which are way too complicated to, to screen print. But mm -hmm. we know that heat pressing is like super complementary in certain in certain situations for us yeah. so um yeah i think you just need to but you have to explore all of these different possibilities of garment decoration to know which ones are like good and profitable and you can put into your own business but no i think yes. your re resources are really rich now like mm. you've covered everything haven't you, <laughs> like, I can't, yeah, you must, <laughs> yeah no yeah it's insane 
we've we just um visited um magna colors as well and that's mm -hmm. like it's opened up my mind again so it's like if you can't do it with screen print with magna colors plus soul or your you guys heat transfers then it's probably not a thing that's possible because well, you've that's got everything the same story the other day wasn't it when you went there for the day and filming all the behind the scenes yeah i thought that. that looks i was quite jealous actually that mm -hmm. looked really fun i wanted to go yeah, I'm such a geek for factories and stuff. And like, even I would watch a video on like how pencils are made because I'm so intrigued <laughs> by processes and machines and yeah, all of that. You guys did a bit of a back. I was I've always wanted to go and see you, your factory, but you did a like a whole overview of how the transfers were made the other day, and I must have watched it like three times. Like, going, oh yeah, okay, so they are putting it through the different systems and stuff. So yeah. Yeah, I'm very limited to what I can show of that because obviously majority of what's in our production studio is confidential. Um, but there are like slight snippets of it that I'm like, no, that looks really cool. People can see this. Like, this is fine. And it, do it does create quite a lot of yeah. system for us, doesn't it? People mm. like to see the machines and how things are done. Yeah. Um, and there are ways of showing it that don't obviously give away Oh, secret secrets. source yeah exactly so I, I i they're kind of my favorite videos to do but yeah you do have to be careful as to yeah. not put in like the names of everything <laughs> all over yeah well yeah even having you guys having that secret source makes it intriguing even if in the end it isn't very intriguing it's kind of like you've got your <laughs> secret recipe it might be really bland but we were all like what is it then so but it makes uh, me laugh because all the behind the scenes videos are always the same like there's the same three or four parts that I can show and I always try and film them in a slightly different way yeah. um, but it's always the same content but it's a different I don't know mm. colouring or transfer or there's there's something that makes it slightly different um but it is it's near enough it's the same thing every single time but they, everyone loves it yeah yeah I, I just think um as as an industry as a whole it's you could there's so many different scales to this so you could mm. just go in as like one person with like one little heat press and a couple of sheets of transfer doing something very bespoke, or you can like scale it up to crazy levels. So it's like an industry where lots and lots of different and like the broad spectrum of people can get involved, isn't it? So are you, are you finding like an influx in people now? Cause they're doing like, they're calling them like side hustles and all that type of mm. thing to try and. It's been, a, yeah. it's been really, I mean, even to be honest, the last two, two years, it's just kind of the amount of people that started garment decorating businesses, but starting them with a niche, which is really good. It's not just like people starting them like, yeah, I'm going to do everything. And then they give up after six months because they've got no focus. But actually, there's lots of really amazing art that's coming through. Now we've got the ultra color product because before um, I don't think we really had, I don't think we ever met before we actually had ultra color. We used to offer print and cut basically. And mm. print and cut is good for, some stuff but if it's not a circle or a crest it doesn't really look <laughs> that great um for an artist anyway um so now we've got the ultra color when you've got all that detail and all and even better colors it's like people are like okay now where they're, they're before they might have had an idea and they're like well i can't do it not, you yeah. know and then they're like oh i can do it now i can put it under a heat press it's easy so there's there's lots and lots of people have started but they've all found their nice niche so they're not even competing with one another they're just like yeah i'm really interested in had a gentleman who's like yeah actually i just do canal boats yeah <laughs> and i was like i was like okay that must be how was that like it's like it's massive it's like, <laughs> it's it's just, no it, it was it was so like sure. yeah but you're like okay i guess it's, you know there's there's really a sort of something for everyone to get stuck into um yeah. and but yeah a lot of people doing side hustles um you know we've had quite a, we get a lot of people watching our how to start t-shirt business videos in general mm. um mostly because most of the barriers to it have kind of gone. And then yeah. it comes down to the ones that are succeeding, the people like yourself, with actually, they're open-minded about technology, but they're always like, okay, what's next? What can I do to improve things? <laughs> um, because that's, and that's kind of about actually taking sort of love and care into what they're doing as well. It's not just a case of, yeah, this is it's a chance to make some money. It's like, actually, I do want to make some money from this, but I really love what I'm doing. And when I pull that T-shirt off the press or off the, or off the carousel and they look at it like yeah that's really cool and it's a real sense of satisfaction for doing it that way yeah i i definitely need to be reined in though because i think people should do these businesses as pairs because <laughs> <laughs> i'm just like i get 
distracted by shiny things and then M reigns me in and goes no we already know how to do this with what we've got and I'm like ah, oh, <laughs> but I want to like I'm trying to force through well not force through but I'm heavily suggesting that we do like color changing ink on this next shirt and she's like mm -hmm. how about we just maybe add a little bit of puff because we've got it we know how it works <laughs> and I'm like ah so yeah I know there is this it's kind of like kid in a sweet shop but you should also be looking at um yeah what is profitable and what makes sense as a business as well you have to uh tamper tamper it down a little bit but yeah I'm such a geek I do get excited about all the stuff that you guys do as well like the high yeah. build yeah I still wear my high build top I've got it just there on the market so <laughs> yeah <laughs> um now you get lots of compliments about high build yeah so it's, it's a difficult one but also some of these things you don't get asked to do from customers because they don't know they're available. Mm -hmm. So that's why like doing our own t-shirt brand and stuff has been really useful because we can teach people the, the topics and techniques that we want them to learn. And we can like guide the artwork as well. Mm -hmm. So we can say, Oh, this design will look really cool with like puff and high build and stuff. So we'll design that in where you, otherwise we were just waiting for, the cool jobs to come and they kind of never really did yeah um do you yeah do you high build together have you done that before um not on the same side but i would i would molly if you if, <laughs> if i was allowed <laughs> I, I would like if i'm in here on like a, uh, on a weekend when i'm the only one around i will do like high builds and weird stuff and push it a little bit and it doesn't always go well but then you just know. to be clear on the weekends, like Monday to Friday, keep in check. And then when it comes to Saturday, she's like, right, I'm going out for a day. Have fun. She, if, if she's at a netball tournament or something, I know that I'm in here with my crap music and my, my <laughs> studio. <laughs> yeah, literally the gate is locked and no one can come in and I'm just here with a, yeah. I, it's a mad professor type situation. But it is, it's, it's funny, it's like, it's not like I have no other interests, but my interest is print. So mm -hmm. I do this for myself anyway. So yeah. I will make like a big edition of art prints and just have fun with it. Uh, but then sometimes you get paid for it as well. So it's all good. Yeah. Well, that's kind of what um, Darren was saying here. We had him uh, back for a second episode the other day, which by the time this comes out, would have probably already come oh, out. Oh, cool. Um, but he was talking about the passion and business side mm. of things as well and how he his passion as well as print is photography. So on the weekends, he'll sort of go into the studio and take time and care over certain photos, but that's, it's work, but it's not work. And that's kind of a, a similar thing that you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. It's your passion as well. And I think you need that to fuel the business side of it as well. Because if you just get into a pattern of printing, the basics for customers, you lose that sort of, like you say, kid in the sweet shop, the excitement, curiosity side of the, the business that keeps it going, keeps your passion alive as well. Yeah, exactly. So you have to. Sorry, I don't know why that's gone on. You have to work it into what you. <laughs> wrap it up. Wrap it up. You're not doing the puff and high build. Um, yeah. No. Yeah. That's why. So that's like this weekend. It kind of it's like tiring, but it didn't really feel like work. We just did a tattoo convention selling the blind maggot shirts. So I. Uh, that to us is like the most fun that we can have because we're at a tattoo convention, which is like our comfort place. We both got tattoos, had some beers, sold some shirts, um, did some good business stuff. And it was like, we're like molding the perfect scenario for ourselves where we're having fun, but also making money. And um, it's got longevity as well because you're building the brand slowly, even though that's kind of not really the, the, the idea around Blind Maggot, but yeah, it's just like selling the shirts that we're producing as an overflow for the videos anyway. So, That's yeah, awesome. definitely. That does it. Is you guys just said something really important? It's like not waiting for customers to tell you what you should be working on, but carving out your own niche and doing the work that's valuable to you. Because mm -hmm. if you stand still long enough in a small town, they'll throw the little crappy jobs at you, which aren't profitable but feel important at the time. Yeah. So yeah, it's um it's very difficult to do, but you need to wait for the you need to try and like hold on, white knuckle it for a little bit, and then the money will come when the jobs suit and you've kind of like mastered it a bit. Yeah. Would you say Victor? I mean, those that have not had the chance to kind of interact with you before, Blind Maggot was 
it's, it's, it's a clothing brand that you you have as well on the side but i, I yeah. think to recall you when you came in here the other, a few weeks ago you're talking about actually when you first start you first start it's actually more of like a, a test case just to be like this is how you do things yeah now you've started no. to go to these festivals and had a fun time do you think is the is blind maggot evolving into an actual more of an actual clothing brand now or, or is um it, more, it might be not more enjoyable i guess maybe yeah we're not really like making garments um to sell that do you know what I mean uh, okay so we're like we're still making the garments as um the focus of the videos mm -hmm. whereas if we if we just wanted to push blind maggot we'd do stuff like paid for advertising sure. and all of that type of stuff we might get like we might hire models to wear the clothes and get a photographer so we'd go down those kind of avenues but we haven't touched that um because I actually I do you know it's actually quite odd. It's like when we started doing the educational side of the videos, I didn't realize how much that would take off in terms of marketing. Mm -hmm. Because when you're doing like advertising, people can see it's an advert and then they'll just flick through. But if you're yeah. teaching something, then they'll like engage with it. And it's kind of the same with Blind Maggot because we're not like forcing it through as an advert, like, oh, buy this shirt, buy the shirt. It's so natural that we don't particularly, we're not like under pressure to sell the shirts. Yeah. So we're kind of really chill, chilled out on the store. We're just talking to people. They don't feel sold to. So then they're buying into it naturally. Yeah. So, yeah, it's um, we've taken the pressure off. So they're not under pressure to buy. Yeah. We can we couldn't care less if they buy a shirt or not. And then they buy one. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like taking the air of desperation off yourself. Um, yeah. As it being your like main source and only source of income. Because uh, it does hang around people on the market stores. And they get like they're getting no sales, and they get like very jumpy, and they're like at the front trying to force sales on people. Right? So, yeah, it's like obvious. You're on the, like you're on the Apprentice, like two for one, three for one. <laughs> yeah, all of that. Um, I do, I do like shouting on the store, like <laughs> one, one for ten, two for twenty, because I know it's a joke, because it's not yeah. a deal at all. But I just like doing it to gauge reaction. Yeah, and I shout, shout it really loud just to wind up M, and she's like rolling <laughs> yeah. her eyes, hiding in the corner. But yeah, no, it's <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's we we love being on the markets and stuff. It's so fun. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, we're not really pushing it as a brand, but it might. It has it has taken over certain uh, revenue in the studio that we can now drop that wasn't very yeah. uh, rewarding. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's nice though because you know following we've been following the blind maggot journey from when it first started but actually it's got a very authentic feel to it so it doesn't surprise me that people were buying into even if you like it's not necessarily how it started but because you every part of it has always been authentic so mm -hmm. that means that actually the art you, you put a lot of care and attention to the artwork that goes into it um picking the nice blanks that it goes on to that it means actually in the end you've actually almost i guess you almost stumbled upon something like oh this is actually really rewarding. It's like an outlet you didn't didn't necessarily know you needed, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, it's now we don't have to do. We can say no to almost every single customer job. We mm -hmm. only take on old. I mean, we only take on customers who we've previously had experience with now. Yeah. And even those, we can sift through and say like, oh, sorry, this one isn't particularly for us, or we're booked up even if we're not like actually like crazy to capacity, we could technically do it, but we're not, we don't need it anymore. So we don't yeah. have to do it. So it's much more, it's much less stressful. So we can actually mm -hmm. plan our day and get more done. Cause you can't do like things like this, like a podcast. If, if you know, by 4 PM, the customer's going to be at the door waiting for their shirts and they won't even yeah. let them cool down before they take them. So it's, yeah, it's just taking all that pressure off. And it's so much more relaxing but i did do it for 10 solid years of grind and oh yeah, yeah. i was going to snap anyway <laughs> yeah it's yeah. kind of the dream though isn't it to get to the point in business not just in printing but in any business or side hustle or what anyone's doing is to get to the point where you can sort of pick and choose your clients and your business because you've hit that level rather than in the beginning being sort of in need of any job that comes through the door so you can get that experience and sort of get that revenue to keep going as a business but you hit a certain point and you go actually this won't work for us i don't really think this is right it's kind of i suppose you've hit that level now where like you say you can turn down jobs that are 100 percent for both you and the customer 
Yeah, a hundred percent. But it wasn't um, actually growing to a, like a, a level of revenue or anything like that. It was, um, it was joining up with our accountant who's called like Annette Ferguson and she's much more than a normal accountant. So she literally ripped our business apart. She wanted to see all of our accounts for the last six months. And that was terrifying because mm -hmm. I was just going through my accounts and just allocating wherever I was just trying mm -hmm. to get rid of them for the day. And then I'll just be like, okay, I don't have to think about that for three months. Mm -hmm. But she was like, no, I'm backdating all of this. I'm seeing every penny that you spent for the last four months. And then it like just threw up all this stuff that I was wasting money on. Mm -hmm. And it was showing me jobs that I was doing where I was getting like actually no profit at the end of it because I've spent so long doing it and it was so off piste. Like I was doing stuff like giant deck chairs and uh, water side transfers for the ceramic industry and restoration, ev anything. Yeah. And I was proud of that vast range, but it's actually just, it's all like a mirage. <laughs> it's not good. I was just yeah. being, I was spending my time being busy on not profitable things and thinking that I was making all this money, but I wasn't, I was turning over money, but it wasn't, there was nothing coming back to me. I was always yeah. in the same like money situation. So it was joining up with her, her revealing all my shortcomings and then me having to look at it and go, oh, okay, I'm just going to work on the best bits and I have to leave all this other stuff on the table. It's very difficult though. If you've got like a bill at the end of the month and someone comes to the door and says, oh, can you do three football kits for me? And I'm like, oh, I could probably charge like a few hundred quid for this or something. Mm. It's very difficult to say no to that hundred quid and then go, no, no, no I'm going to work on my tutorial videos because the tutorial yeah. videos will pay my rent next month and the month after. Yes. So it, yeah, it so I, think I think it's a really good point is actually wait, if someone's like, so actually not even if they're just the first thing I'm thinking about starting, actually they're already in the midst of it. It's actually having that cost calculator. So, you know, you know, one of the things we always tell people is don't forget to pay yourself. Mm. It's actually, and you know, when it, especially, I mean, we see it most with people who are printing with vinyl and they're like, yeah, yeah, you've got these loads of jobs coming through, and they're like, and like, okay, how much time are you spending weeding? And they're like, oh yeah, you know, probably two hours a day. And you're like, that's a lot. Of, that's a lot of money, because you don't make any money weeding. No. So it, it's very, if it's just like a big design, you can just rip it off. Yeah, fine. It's that's that's a, that's one of the best ways to do it. But if you like anything more than a minute per job, is like actually you, you already start losing money on that job. Um, yeah, every time you pick out a cavity, it's not the good way to do it. So. <laughs> It is true, though, isn't it? But you, I, I, you I know, to know yeah. when, when to like when to switch to screen printing, when to strip to do transfers. Um, you know, like you're saying with the neck labels, you wouldn't want to. A lot of people do those with vinyl still. You know, like, well, that, yeah. I can't really pick all that out or school leavers or something. Like it's just you just lose them. But I like I like weeding. It's very relaxing. No, it's <laughs> not me. No, it's, it's not relaxing. relaxing. You look at your bill at the end of the month and realize how much time you've wasted weeding, yeah. and they say won't do it again. But I bet people don't look at it in that way that you just explained because i didn't think of it mm. like that until you just said it so that's probably a wake-up call for a lot of our customers mm. no there's there are some harsh realities and there's things that i hear people say over and over again and now they're warnings for what i used to do and i can now see it in other businesses and people and what they say yeah so like the first one is is that kind of thing like oh i find it relaxing this is not a hobby or if it is a hobby good for you yeah. But you need to get out of that mindset because this is a business now. So start treating it like a business. Yeah. Um, so do things like don't have your personal account and your business account together. Separate them. Make like make plans. Track your finances. Know how profitable you are. And not how profitable you are at the end of the year every single week. We know how much profit we make every week now, which is amazing. So mm -hmm. it all goes into spreadsheets and stuff. And then the second thing is this phrase, this is going to be like quite jarring for a lot of people because they probably just say it all the time, but it's like, oh, my work, my marketing is all word of mouth. But what, what that means is you're not doing any marketing at all and you're relying on what the universe puts your way. Right. It's kind of like going fishing with a big trawler net and then just seeing what you've got and then reacting to everything that comes in the net. And it's yeah. just waste and it's busyness and it's not good. Whereas if you're very hyper-specific, then you can target people, get the really, really good customers and leave all the all the crap jobs in the 
in in the town for the person down the road who doesn't care. Um, yeah, and we'll we'll do those jobs, yeah, and we'll um, we'll think they're busy, but they're just literally just spinning their wheels, and yeah. they'll go under in a few years anyway. But yeah, that's a, that's like really harsh thing to say, but I I personally think it's true, and it could have pull, pulled us under as well. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing that because I think that I think it is a really important <laughs> thing to learn, and that's you know we've seen I hear that from quite a few customers is actually, well, you know, like you say, when you first start, you know, you might, yeah, do you know what? I'll take, I'll take a bit of this, take a bit of that, because one, you need to just keep learning how to actually do printing of any kind, really. Yeah. Actually, once you get to that, you know, it's important for anyone in any job when they learn to say no to something, it's such a valuable lesson because you, well, when those customers start to respect you a bit more actually anyway, but actually I think you find that it kind of gives you a bit more focus to like say to free yourself free your brain up a little bit to actually think actually that isn't the right job for me um but they you know i'll, I'll take yeah. the next one if I, if I do a great job with the bigger customers as well they'll keep coming back to me because i'm putting that care and attention and my skills into making sure they've got a 10 out of 10 job that way i think as well yeah like, the things that they need to hear aren't necessarily things that they want to hear mm -hmm. which it can be quite destructive to a business but like you say the harsh truths are the ones that you need to just be like right okay let's just deal mm -hmm. with this and then it will benefit us in the long run rather than putting your head under the sand and being like no we're fine we're getting by week on week and and just ignoring it because like you say they are the ones that will go that will go bust yeah. in the end yeah especially now we're in, we are in a recession now so this is this is it you've got to if this isn't scary if covid wasn't scary enough and if this isn't scary enough then i don't know just it just that you're not you're not going to be cut out for it and um you're, you're going to suffer and it, you might have a detrimental effect on like what you're doing to your family as well so um i thought that was a really that was a big transition in our business too because i used to rely on squeegee just solely for myself so i only had to support myself on it and then when m came on as a director then i was like oh i have to sort myself out because it's not all my silly like things that I'm spending just silly money on here and there that is affecting just me. It was mm. affecting both of us. So yeah. any decision I made, I knew it was taking money out of her um, wages as well. So that's that's why I'm saying like partner up with someone, have like this uh, just like responsibility not only to yourself but to your business as a as a thing that you're nurturing and maybe to another person because it kind of yeah just stops you and makes you rethink about your decisions a little bit more yeah yeah it's interesting mm. yeah a big topic and I'm, i read a lot of business books and i get a bit passionate so, so. Yeah. <laughs> fine because you want to something that um martin the md said here before when he often tells it to our customers that come in he says actually one of the most best bits of advice that he got was um hire a financial controller or an accountant in your case before you need them yes because yes they'll pay them they'll pay off they'll pay i'm sure the advice that she gave you paid off anything way more than the actual money it cost to hire her in the first yeah. quite a quick turnaround i'm sure she, she found a, a ten thousand pound grant that i did not know i was i didn't even know it existed uh and she found it for me in a couple of weeks and i was like great well you've just paid for yourself for the next like few years yeah and then it opened up the grant train guys like there's grants. There's so many grants. We've got mm. loads of them. You normally have yeah. to like put a pitch up for them, but I've got gazebos. I've got like all the microphones, the lights, uh, the, the gimbals, everything like that. There's money available from the government, but it's like hidden in all these little tiny pockets. Yeah. So writing, there's just like, there's literally free money accessible for businesses that fit in those niches so there'll definitely be some for like there's loads for like women startups um if you're trying to uh build technology into your business yeah. um there's lots of digital ones so like helping people out with software there's one at the moment and it's like up to five thousand pounds for software so that could be like your digitizing software or there's just so much there that people just haven't tapped into yeah so i'm i'm on those sites all the time now like it's it's just exciting and then you just have to do a little video at the end saying oh this is how i used my thing my grant and you're you're not like taking money from anyone else particularly you're just 
you're just showing that you're you're worthy for it for it and you're going to use it effectively it's brilliant um yeah i think that's a really good point actually because there's lots of you know it's it's always worth contacting like a chamber of commerce yes. or the lep in your area where they're because they a lot of these businesses essentially exist to help uk business yeah so yeah like you say you're not you're not robbing anyone because this money is is there to help people so they can start off right and help accelerate those mistakes or you know actually start with the right bit of kit so they're not just gonna i know say they wanted to buy a carousel or a, a heat press that they can yeah. buy the right one so they're not just they're not got they've got the right equipment you're not going to have to send that stuff back to a customer lose money on that job etc so it by just giving people a nudge in the right direction it's a great way to get going i one of yeah. my past uh past lives was working for the department of international trade i was in the uh -huh. marketing team and same thing if people are um looking to export or do r d there's lots of grants available through again chamber of commerce in different innovation hubs there's loads of those dotted throughout the uk that just again there to help you succeed so it's mm -hmm. you know, like it's a that's a great uh, sort of nugget of information for anyone's listening is yeah do look into the even if it's just like i don't know a green grant to insulate your your place of work or something like that it can all make yeah. a difference to you. Yeah. Or um, also, I find um, there's this, like it is a little bit of a different topic, but it's going back to what we said about like the educational stuff. Is that don't be scared to invest in yourself because if mm -hmm. you've paid to go to university and okay, yeah, you might not pay to go to school and stuff, but you paid all that money to go to uni or college or something. And you're putting all that money into your like mind and your education and then you go into your business and you just spend all the money on like equipment and then you don't spend a, like a dime on your on your own education and your mind on how to use that equipment i yeah. find that so backwards now being in this because i can we can like escalate people to like an actual level where they can print commercially within a few days and so yeah. can you, like you've got your courses on how to use a heat press effectively. So why wouldn't you spend like 500 quid or like a grand or something learning how to make money with the equipment that you've got instead of spending six months and maybe thousands of pounds? Because I've messed up jobs, heat press and screen print, and I've lost thousands of pounds. Thanks for listening to the Target Transfers podcast. And just a quick reminder to don't forget to hit that subscribe button, turn those notifications on. Okay, now back to the podcast. One of the things yeah, I really wanted to ask you actually yeah. about Chelsea was you obviously with Blind Maggot, you've been doing a lot of festivals and events uh, this year. Now you've got the chance to. How has it been um, going along to festivals? Has it been quite a fun experience? Have you learned? Is there anything you've learned you didn't expect to learn from uh, taking your products along? There's there's a lot about that festival that I can't even tell you about because it's just a bit um, X-rated with the <laughs> with oh my god the stuff we saw. So yeah, we we have the regular markets and they're very mm -hmm. like family friendly down the high street. Yeah. And then we thought that the people who were buying off the markets weren't necessarily our target market because they're kind of like a little bit tattoo, a little bit skateboard. Mm -hmm. So we thought, well, if we're doing this well on the Newbury High Street, which is just like, you know, this it's nothing exciting, then imagine what we'd do at NAS Festival, which is like, you know, skateboard graffiti tattooed people yeah um so then we we did we did turn it we did go for it because we also just wanted to go and see the music as well a little bit yeah so we did prepare for it we it is is a lot of effort um but again like we did get a grant for like all our van and our gazebo and stuff so it's not like a finance like a huge financial obligation oh, okay yeah so um yeah we did it's a lot of work though putting it all together like doing figuring out all the display and then when we got there it was very lackluster but it wasn't necessarily like it was like circumstantial so it's like they were supposed to have about thirty thousand people there but there was only ten thousand. Oh, okay and then this is just what other market traders along along the our side were saying they're like guys don't this isn't normal because we come every year and we wouldn't come if it was like this mm -hmm. and then when we were walking around the festival the kids could like barely they were eating our chips and we were like you guys look so hungry just have our food because they were not spending money on food and yeah t-shirts they were spending it on um like other things so it was just a very odd experience but i kind of yeah. don't want it to dampen our our thoughts on other stuff but then this weekend we just did a tattoo convention and we really we really did well uh so i think it helped us 
very distinctly learn our niche mm -hmm. that it isn't young teenagers and because they just haven't got the cash for what we're offering yeah. like they were wanting they were buying hoodies for each other because they were freezing cold not because they wanted a nice hoodie and our stuff is yeah. like a bit more premium so yeah it was a it was a good learning experience for sure uh and i just i'm too old for camping now it took me like <laughs> two weeks to recover like physically <laughs> i was just mashed so i learned i'm too old and they're too young that's that's what i yeah. figured out there yeah <laughs> that's the conclusion i've never been a fan of camping personally so i couldn't agree with you on that one no uh, and now if i ever am in that camping situation i know to like peg my tent out and it's not like an extra because then do you mean like the tent falls in and then your right. whole tent is wet from the like condensation and stuff yeah so i woke up with a completely wet head and like shoulders from the tent i was just it was just pure grim <laughs> on that's the really like, i'd love to experience that <laughs> yeah and then go selling for 12 hours no in a heat wave as well, so everyone was burnt. So it was just, it was, I think it was like a few things coming together as like a slightly hellish experience. But um, yeah, it's okay. We education is always as long as you can learn something from it. It's, that's yeah. the main yeah, thing. Yeah, I won't be doing that again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, even if it is that mentions when you can have a hotel, maybe. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, they were trying to book us in for some more, but we we're like, um, well, like we have no, to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll put a pin in it. But we are going to like book in for some conventions, so that's going to be fun. Yeah, excellent. Well, do you think you'd ever do sort of like um, live uh, decorating events? Have you thought about going down that avenue at all? Uh, I've done some. Uh, we've done, I've been at those huge kind of trade shows in like those halls. So mm -hmm. I've done live decorating at those for corporate customers. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done a lot of, we often just bring a single arm press on markets and things and do mm -hmm. live printing. Uh, now the the audience has changed a little bit. It was a bit more family friendly when we used to do homewares and things like that mm -hmm. and artwork. But now we're into the t-shirts. It's a, The audience don't really want to like interact and like print a shirt. They just want to kind okay. of like be left alone to browse. So, yeah. uh, but I have done a lot of it and it is a real big crowd pleaser. Mm -hmm. You need minimal kit, single arm press, couple of screens. It's, it is definitely lucrative and a way to drum up not only um, attention on the day, but lots of inquiries from like, oh, who do you print this for other people? Or can you put this design on a shirt? They do kind of think like you can just come up with any design and put it on the shirt there and then. Mm -hmm. but um yeah no it's if you are a small town printer or if you rely on that local stuff getting a market stand in your local town that's literally like a little um magnet for inquiries and things yeah. that's what i would do if i was starting out again and that was my audience okay cool that's good to know mm -hmm. yeah um so one thing i wanted to ask you about because you know obviously you, you very kindly come on our podcast today but you're also a, also a, a podcast host of your own you have the squeegee link podcast yeah uh, which i think you're up to about 25 ish episodes now i believe yeah we finished uh season one so season yeah. two is coming in a few weeks so we've got we're just uh just slightly changing the angle of who we're interviewing a little bit more okay. but uh yeah no that's gonna be it's gonna be exciting we're doing new intros and things for that um yeah, what was the, what was the question about the podcast? Just how, <laughs> just how um, you know, I was wondering what, why you chose to get started, and, and just to kind of for anyone that any one of our listeners that might want to check out your podcast, what sort of uh, stuff you get covered on it? Yeah, um, so it is for is so season one is exclusively like studio owners in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, so they were basically people that we have built up like kind of loose relationships with over the years from just referring back and forth. Yeah. But then what I found is that they, those kind of people have such a wealth of knowledge that we can all share. And there's like this generation now of studio owners where they're, they're literally like of the same kind of like age bracket. Mm -hmm. And we're very open to sharing and telling people our experiences. Like we'll, we'll tell our, like what ink we're using and like what press and, oh, don't do that. It was so like sharing of stuff, whereas the slightly older generation are a bit more closed off about it. Mm -hmm. So we've kind of just opened that gate and now we're all like mates. <laughs> so we're like, I've got a list of, we get 
those inquiries that I don't particularly want or don't suit us, we can now refer to like studios that will bite your arm off for it because it is what they do. Yeah. So, um, for example, like there's a gym that I've had a relationship with for a few years. So I've just handed that off to one of the old podcast guests, for example, and they're like willingly taking it on because that's what they want. Mm -hmm. So it's it's like opened up a lot of those kind of relationships which are mutually um, beneficial. But it's also just really fun talking to yeah. people about shared experiences that you thought were just yours or you have never been able to figure out like a certain issue and they're like, Oh, just do this. And you're like, oh, for God's sake, I could have done that years ago if I'd yeah. have known. Um, so yeah, the reason for it, we like making content. Uh, we like talking to people and podcast is, is easy once it's set up, but setting it up is awful. Um, <laughs> it was really, really hard to get everything together and make it part of our routine, but yeah, you know, we're, we're on it now. And it's easier to like set up. Like I set this up in like a few minutes because obviously I'm not hosting. So I don't <laughs> have to get the balloons in like you guys for your thousand yeah. downloads. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm leaving them up for as long as they last. And <laughs> 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 yeah. make them there. I'm, I'm leaving them until they deflate. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully it doesn't just like the one goes down. It's just like loads of O's, which doesn't yeah, make sense. Right. For... No, one listens. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no one likes it. <laughs> no, yeah. Um, no, I, and then we're doing because now you've got like the podcast set up. It also leads on to you can snip that up as content for mm -hmm. like uh, you could do the transcripts on the website to help with like SEO and YouTube Shorts and Reels and all of that stuff. So making content for us is very important. So it's literally part of our working day. So it seems yeah. to be a really good avenue to keep that going, so that you don't have to be like motivated all the time it's just part of your routine so it becomes yeah. habit yeah that's, that's actually a really useful. good tip for anyone starting out because we we have done podcast episodes before talking about marketing and photography and content creation and one of our biggest pieces of advice is, is for business owners that are just starting out to just start with content your first one is never going to be perfect but the more you do the better you get um, but that's also a really good tip is like you say, the more you do it, it just becomes part of your daily routine. And then whether you use all of that content or not, doesn't matter, but you've done it and it's, it's a habit now. So if you do something and you go, oh, that would have been really good to have had on film, it's, it's there and it's done and you can just edit it how you please. So yeah, yeah that's a really, really helpful tip for mm -hmm. any new or existing business owners. Yeah. And also don't just leave it to the youngest person in the uh, organization because that's also very lazy and I've heard that before as well because it, you need to guide that marketing um, and there's also little traps that you can fall into where you're like oh crap I haven't done a Instagram post today so then they just film the same thing for the 50th time and it adds no value to the customer yeah so yeah creating content does need to be carved out a bit in terms of like what you're actually trying to sell so if you're Sometimes you might have to buy in a certain top, like you might have to buy a Leavis hoodie before Leavis hoodie season, decorate it and tell people that that's what you do, for example, instead yeah. of just waiting for it to come in. Because, yeah, it's it's kind of like, um, yeah, you have to preempt the jobs and like you have to force it in. You can't just wait to see what happens in the studio and video it. You have to orchestrate yeah. it a little bit, script it a little bit. Um but I think all business owners have to do it. Mm -hmm. like, there was a point where people didn't have uh, websites and now everyone has a website. And now there's there's people who didn't have any digital marketing and then they're just gonna get eaten up by people like us basically, who, if you Google like Newbury screen printers, we're like the first five pages now, not the first, we're not just at the top. So mm -hmm. There's so many videos, yeah. you, can't, you can't get at us now. So we're, they're just, they're being phased out for new custom. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's it's competitive in a different way. And yeah. I think it's important to keep a hold of it. Yeah, for sure. Not yeah. Off. <laughs> yeah. So I think, I think you, you're doing a, you guys are doing a great job with your Instagram and TikTok and YouTube because it's really, you're kind of, the way you're, you're approaching everything from a very authentic but very educational point of view, you're doing, just putting, good energy out there for a lot of it i think um mm. and i imagine that's probably a good a good reason why your customers keep coming back to you because they probably see those videos and they're like yeah look 
I, they want to be working with people like you that are having a good time doing it, but also producing high quality products as well. It's, it's going to be a good feeling from that whole relationship and partnership they have with you that way. Hmm. Yeah, even but even making the content, it's kind of like a byproduct of it is that we're getting all the inquiries. Yeah. But um, other people aren't doing the education. If they if everyone else is doing educational videos as well, then what you're doing is you're setting yourself up as like an expert in the field. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, something that the other printers don't or something. So then if someone's picking between us and the guy down the road, we're setting ourselves up as the experts. So they want the experts to do the job. Yeah. Um, that's so there you go. It's, we're just winning all these little fights between customers. If you are seeing like local printers as competition. Um, yeah. So we're getting more inquiries than we can deal with because we're making educational content and marketing. Whereas other people go, they go, Oh, we haven't got any customers or enough customers. So then they're spending money on their marketing on, you know, like flat ads or whatever it is that they're spending the money on. Um, whereas we're technically getting paid for our marketing because we're getting paid for our YouTube now, we're getting paid for TikTok. And so it's, yeah, it's just a different angle on it. Um, yeah. And it does pay off. And um, yeah, I just, do you know when you're in it and you're like, why is everyone not doing this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what it feels like. And I can just yeah. scream about it all the time. And if they do it, they do it. And if they leave it, then they're leaving money on the table. So yeah, it's up to them. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Well, I think you've, you've offered some really great advice today, Jesse. I really do appreciate um, the insight you've shared on being a business owner, because I think there's a few people that listen to this that will have, that'll be some light bulb moments going off in the way that they approach not just their business, but their content creation that um, I think it'd be a massive, massive, massive help. Good. Sorry. Sorry if I come off harsh. I can't, I just get passionate. No, that's <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. I think we okay. all need it every yeah. again. Yeah. Okay. So I would, um, but I would encourage anyone that's um, listening or watching to go and check out Squeegee and Inc because they've uh, got a fantastic website with lots of resources on there. Um, but do follow them on Instagram and TikTok and Facebook because there's a lot of really interesting content they put out there. And they've got a fantastic podcast, another one that much like ourselves, where we we're like, okay, well, there's no one's educating people on these things. Yeah. Podcasts are a great way to do it. So um, I appreciate the fact that you're helping, trying to help the garment decorating industry in the UK as well, because I think that we all need to be doing more and more to do, to kind of build this market up a bit. So, um, you know, great job uh, from us for doing that. Uh, we really appreciate that. Brilliant. Thank uh, you. And thank you again for coming on to the podcast. I'm sure this won't be the last time that we have you on because there's, <laughs> we, we only got through about half the questions because we went off on a, a tangent, but a really useful one. And uh, the one I didn't expect to go on, but I'm really pleased that we did. So uh, thank you again for that. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to use my transfers now for my net enable. Okay. So we're all in a, like a cycle. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Thanks, so Thanks much guys. For today, and no if you don't uh, already subscribe to the Target Transfer podcast, please do that. Uh, we are on Apple, Spotify, and YouTube. And come over and follow us on Instagram as well, where we share sort of snippets into each week's new episode um, and sort of the key takeaways from each episode as well. So, yeah, make sure you do that. And we will see you next week.